I'm Victor Garza. Antonio Mendez. Um, I think it was a Tuesday we went, was it Tuesday? And a Tuesday we went uh, to Rancho Cucamonga. I uh, picked up Tony and Nelson. We met, we drove down there, and uh, they gave us treats and they gave us lunch. And uh, uh, there was a lot of veterans there, you know, all the boys. And he was even Coast Guard guys. Normally Coast Guard don't show up. Maybe there were maybe two or three of them. And uh, it was fun. I had, good, I had two good students that were honor students, so they listened to everything I had to say. Sometimes they didn't have questions, so I spoke to them. I had my wife with me, and she got mad because, hey, you're talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what we were there for. If they didn't want to hear that story, we came up with another one. So that's funny. And you had nothing but girls with you? Did you talk to them? <laughs> yes. Uh, my group was uh, very polite and then they, they were very inquisitive and I asked all the questions and, and they, they were they kept me on my toes all the time, kept asking this and that, you know. They showed that they had a lot of interest. Yeah. Are you standing on your toes right now, Antonio? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you standing on your toes right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said he's going to kick you right now. <laughs> anyway, I uh, took a box of sea rations that we used in Vietnam that I had a collection of them. So I gave it to one of the students with me and I said, now, see that veteran over there from Vietnam or that one over there? Go take it over there and see what they tell you about this stuff in there. And they came back with a lot of stories about eating that sea ration and what they liked and all that stuff. But anyway, that's why I take it. Because I know what I did with them, but I wanted to hear from other veterans on their stories. Is that the second or third year you participate with that, Richard? Uh, this is about my third year. Yeah. I think this is Tony's first one, right? For yeah. Rancho Rucamanga? Yeah. There might be another one in Claremont that we went to. I haven't heard from it. Have you? Yeah. Rob? Not yet. Because last time, I think you came out on, on ABC News. Oh, yeah. Well, that's how I know about that one. I, they told me that I came out, and I didn't speak much, but they said I came out on, on the news yeah. again, but just a little shock. Oh, and I tried to find it in the computer, but I'm not that good at the computer, so I missed it. I put that clip, your clip, when you went there and sharing with the students, I put it on our website. Yeah, that was at, uh, at Martin Luther King High School. Yeah. I guess that's about it. If anybody wants to go, let us know and we'll just uh, help you with it. How many, sorry, how many students there were in that? Was it like a, a, a half a, a day really they were all rally? Juniors, the whole junior class. Mm. And it's a big school. Yeah. And they, really all, big. they all dressed real nice. The guys had their ties. I would ask them yeah. how they fixed their ties and they said my dad did it. And <laughs> some guy said I looked it up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> And so they want to pay respect to you guys. Yeah. Oh, okay. We better change the caps, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't yeah. yeah. Two, so yeah, now we're, now we're in order. Now Antonio feels like himself, the World War II Silver Star veteran. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard, Vietnam. Richard, I mean, hold on. Tell us a little bit about the album that you have. Because you got some phenomenal pictures from when you oh, were so. Oh, and I, in Vietnam, I ordered me a camera to the PX, the little book they had, and they came to me, and I would take it out to the field and shoot pictures. And I, we were in the Mekong Delta, and he was too, that we could only go out there maybe one or two or three days, and they bring us in because there was a lot of swamps and canals, and they were always wet. So the soldier would come in with a ringworm, a rat, a fungus, or something. So there was a lot of sick frogs. So that's why they were bringing us in early. We, in the morning, we get dry boots, a dry uniform, and then we go out again. They fly us out in helicopters, or they take us on the boat, or they drive us out in the truck and drop us off. And we spend maybe one, or two, or three nights, but we have to come back, because otherwise we get sick. Anyway, I took the camera with me, and I shoot pictures all the time. And when we got to the big base, they had arts and crafts for all the rims to do something. They even had a miniature golf course and they had a steam room. They had all the guys in base. Antonio's <laughs> one, sorry, Antonio's wondering, were you really in combat? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, these are for the guys that. <laughs> you should see his expressions. <laughs> well, you know, there, was, there were 10 veterans for every combat veteran. So they, for the other 10, they fixed it up nice. For the one guy, we just. Anyway, they had an arching craft, and the arching craft, they had a photo lab. 
So I would go in there and develop the role one time and come back the next day and print that role, develop another, come back and I did that. That's why I had a lot. So Antonio, uh, while, while others are putting on camo, camo, camouflage, Richard's putting a uh, camera camouflage. <laughs> Make I'm sorry, up. I couldn't take any pictures. Where I was, there were no cameras. <laughs> no the veterans no, have, uh, what do you call those cameras? Not digital, man. They don't even have to have a dark room. Wow. Anyway, that's it. So Antonio, did you have a ch no, no chance of uh, ordering something from the local uh, we hardly ever heard anything from the rear. You know, we was up in the front all the time, and uh, the only, the only, the only conversation we had was with your buddies or the squad, and that's it. Uh, it was a different type of war. And you never got clean clothes? No. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I got clean clothes when I, when I got wounded. I got clean clothes, but uh, if you're, uh, but when you come back, you know, uh, uh, you you go to what you call the duck pile. That means uh, people, that, soldiers that got hurt or, or wounded, uh, their clothes are there. So you go to the duck pile and look what whatever you need. You know, a helmet. You know, most of you need a helmet and a cover. You know, and you look. Some of the helmets are pretty beat up and, you know, and bloody. So you pick the, the neatest one. And, like, I, I couldn't find one and they told me, you better get the dead because you're shining at night. So finally I found one, but, but the helmet, that went with it, you know, uh, because everybody's head is different. And you have to get that liner that goes and fits on you. And, uh, and so I carried it for about a week. I couldn't put it on, you know. And then the guy said, hey, man, you, you, we could see you last night. And the moon struck me at night, you know, it reflects on the helmet. And I said, okay. So I cleaned it as best as I could, you know. You don't need, uh, you're very special on water because uh, water don't come up to the front that often. You know. So you have to be sparely and use a rag, whatever you do, you find. Mostly you use the grass or something to clean it. So there was a different type of war, and I understand that. It's amazing you guys, like back home, you get rations and you get your, your, your canitas, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was That's really fine something. first. No, <laughs> only in that rag pile that you picked up, did they at least wash all their clothes they put in that pile? What? Did they clean the clothes that were in that pile to get? No, were they clean uh, or dirty? No, they were dirty. They were, there was no place to clean them anyway. You know, and uh, it was hard bringing supplies up, you know. Uh, a lot of times we had to watch our ammo because uh, we was getting short and we don't know when it was coming back up. There's a lot of things that went different. Antonio. We happened to get them hard tax. It was, it was, we were still hungry. We were always hungry. You were. You, you say you didn't really get a chance to clean up when, uh, out there, kind of like our our Hollywood. Oh, you're, you're, you're in uniform. You're in a you're in a guard hole, you know, and you're moving to whenever you're in the valley of fighting, you know, and then when it stops, you're, you're in, you find a place to stand and you know, and you get your most of the time, when you take a place, you move out to outside. The officers, you know what I mean? The vision comes in, in and moves in. You're out there in a the few. There was one time we pulled a fast one because it was, it was getting cold and we was always on the, on the line. So they had, my squad said, hey man, this, why don't we try something? I said, okay, what do you want? So he says, you know, Every time we take something, we have to move up to, to, to the front. And then they come in and they all sleep in a goddamn house, you know, and, 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 and in that cold weather. And we're out there in, on the holes. Well, what do you expect? He said, well, we could take it and then tell them we, it's not secure. And I said, I don't understand what you're meaning. He said, well, if it's not secure, they're not coming in. So we, 
we just put our point guards outside out there and we're sleeping out in a in a in a, in a like a, a shed or something whatever. I said, okay, I said, that sounds pretty good, let's try it. So we did. I mean we, we took this in a it was a it was a barn and a couple of small houses, you know. And uh, it, the, the runner came up and uh, said, oh, we can't take it. it we, we're just taking it over. He comes back and says, it wasn't secured. So we got, we took turns sleeping in, in, the, in the building. And we had our, 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 our what you call our listening post outside, forward, forward, and a forward echelon. So they, if anything happened, they'd, they'd come out and they had runners. We had runners at that time because we, uh, our lines were very extended, so so th that way we, we could right away push out. And, but that's the only time we slept in some in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the barn and stuff like that. Mostly in the old one. Antonio, how yeah. many ha how many people have heard Antonio's ugly German story <laughs> or haven't heard it? Who hasn't heard it? <laughs> you have someone who hasn't heard your ugly German story, Antonio. Can, do you mind sharing it? Which one do you want to hear? The one with, with the one where you shot that very ugly-looking German soldier. Oh. Because that he. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> what happened there, Antonio? We came to this. It was it was a small little little town, you know, and uh, we took it over. Uh, let's see. And so, uh, in my squad, I never asked anybody to do that I couldn't do. So, I was, I was a different squad leader, according to what they tell me. Anyway, so, you, you pair off, and you go into a building, one just stays at the door, and the other one starts on himself and work up. And, and we, that's, a, that's the way we, we was taught. Anyway, so it was my, it was my turn to go down in the cellar. So before you go down, you, you holler down to, you know, to come on up. He's coming. Nick's shooting. I mean, you're not shooting, come up. Anyway, uh, nobody answers. And you, I looked at the guy at the door. He said, well? So I said it again, you know, and they come. So that means I have to go down and check. So I said, okay. So I started down. It's a, it, they always got every big house has a has a cellar, and so I come down and it's dark, you know, and, and it's a small house, and then they have a, like a big building down here, big big room down at the cellar. Anyway, uh, I go down there, and this this is a turn like that because they got mirrors down there so they can see who's coming down. Anyway, so I come down, I come around, and then I turn around, I see this German, you know, with a, he's dark and a helmet all dirty, and my, it seemed like time stood still, it looked like somebody hit me right here. I, uh, and I just pulled the trigger, you know, bang! And, and, and then, then it seemed like I could just breathe. Oh, man, that was close, and nothing happened. So the guy said, hey, you okay with this? Yeah, I'm okay. What happened? And I looked around. Oh, he's dead. So I didn't want, you know, I, I said, okay. He says, you can come up. I was going, I started to come up and, and there's a guy, Koke. He was a scavenger. He was, a, he was always picking up things, you know. He said, well, man, let's check him out and see what he got. I said, oh, he ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he ain't got nothing? Well, yeah, he's got the sacred rifle and stuff, but, but he, he got, he, I think he ain't got shit. Anyway, I started, well, he, I come up, and the guy says, and the uh, go catch there, and he says, well, he says, I, I'm going to go down, and make, he, uh, he must have, he, he must have a ring or something. No, no, forget it, let's go, let's go. No, I'm going to go, heck, you, you, you don't care about that, I do. So we went down, and I, I waited up on top, I said, I wonder what that guy's going to do. And he comes back and shakes his head, well, go good. Yeah, he's dead all right, and he goes out past me. So I walk out there. So we, 
during about half an hour after we, we, we cleared the, uh, the area and everything, we settled out, we got in a home, and he came running out and told the guys, hey, okay, did you find anything? And the guy says, no, he, he says, he wasn't there. What do you mean he wasn't there? So they turned around and looked at us. What happened, Mendes? Oh, they said, nobody was there. So he, he started laughing. He said, we got some guy that's really quick on the trigger, man. He, he shot this guy fast. <laughs> you know what happened was, when I came around, I saw this ugly guy, you know, German. So I shot, but then I, you know, it was really me. It was a mirror. It was a mirror. <laughs> There's a mirror there that reflected me, you know, and and I couldn't believe it was me because I had a beard and dirty, you know, smog and everything, and I had my helmet was down, you know, and and he looked like a German to me. <laughs> really ugly and dirty. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, your heart really stopped me, man. It looked like somebody hit me right here. And I, I the... You mean you didn't have time to order stuff from the PX like Richard over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, but to all fairness to Richard, Richard, you were, those were combat missions you were on to. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the PX were the combat <laughs> <laughs> You were fighting people for the ra last uh, uh, sea ration. <laughs> you know, have, have you guys seen the Ali Murphy story? Has everybody seen it? No? Yeah. Well, it's the army, that's why you haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Ali Murphy, in his movie, because he was in Germany, that happened to him too. And they made fun of him, because uh, he was a sergeant at that time. He shot himself too. <laughs> he was walking down, the, down the, into the cellar, and he saw his reflection, and he just reacted and shot him. And all the guys were making fun of him. He, he, you know, hey, Murphy, yeah, Ali Murphy shot himself, sir. Shot himself, shot himself. Sir. But that was in his movie too. Ah. Okay. Well, every, and any questions for Antonio and Richard? If not, thank you for sharing, Antonio and Richard. Gracias. <laughs>